Can we predict IELTS speaking questions? The answer is no. However, we can look at historical trends to see what topics are most commonly revisited. To do this, we need three tools. So the first is a very large library of historical IELTS speaking questions, and that's what you see here on my screen. This text document has over 200 exams. These are exams that appeared between 2020 and 2022. And the source for these questions was largely from the best resource that I found online for historical um, questions and topics. That's IELTS-blog.com. Definitely worth checking out. And I've also included the exams that candidates have sent me personally as well. So this is a, an amalgamated list between the two. And so what we're looking at is over 200 exams as reported by candidates. So we've got that. The second thing we need is Google Docs, which is what you see here on the screen. This is just so that we can play around with the text a little bit. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And then the third thing we need is um, something called a, a word cloud or a word cloud creator. And what a word cloud is, is it's a visualization of the most commonly repeated words in a list of text. Okay, so we're going to create one of these today and we're going to look at what are the most common words that appear in IELTS speaking questions. Of course, it's very important to say up front that this experiment has a very large margin of error. And this is because it's very unlikely that we have a full and complete list of questions here. However, in doing this experiment, we should at least be able to provide some broad clues as to the more commonly revisited topics from the past few years. And also, this will produce some question words, some of the more commonly seen question words. And we can discuss the structure of the questions that have been commonly used over the past few years. I think that will be helpful to you as well. Okay, so step one is, of course, to amalgamate all of the questions into a very long list, as we have done here. So step two, what we need to do is we need to remove words like part, because part is repeated over and over again in this document, but it is not one of the, one of the words that the examiner says. Okay, so I've actually created a second document, and all I've done in this second document is I have removed some of the signposting um, language that you see here. Okay, so step three, after we have removed these words, is to copy what is left in your text document and then go over to your word cloud tool. I'm using worditout.com and I'm going to, I'm just going to go back to the home page here and I'm going to generate a word cloud. Okay, so if you click on create your own, this is a free service by the way, and then you just copy the text in here, uh, go to generate and it will produce the word cloud for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, fiddle around with the colors just to make it a little bit clearer for us. So I want the background to be gray and I want the most common words that appear to be bright green and I want the most uncommon words or the less common words to be bright red. Okay, and I want the um, words, the colors to map to frequency. So how often we see these words. If they're, if they're commonly seen they're in bright green and if and as they get less commonly seen they become red. So the first thing that we see here is overwhelmingly the most common word that appears that is said by the IELTS examiner at least as far as these reported questions are concerned is the word people and that's very interesting and if I just go to our original list here and I do a quick control F and I search for the word people let's look at how the word people is used uh, in these questions. Now it appears 555 times, which is a lot. And you can see that the word people is used to connect the topic more broadly to the idea of society, right? So if, if we just take this very first example here, so it says, what are some things you would never do in a hurry? And then this is, so this is very personal. This is asking you, what would you never do in a hurry? But then the examiner uses the word people to broaden the question a bit. Are people more likely to make mistakes when they are in a hurry? So we're, it's more asking for a comment on society in general. Okay, and here's another good example. So in part three of this exam, the examiner asks the candidate, what music do you like? And then they broaden this by using the word people. So do you think people should listen to music while walking? 
which music do people like in your country? Right. So these are much broader questions. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, the word people is so common that you can see it is much, much, much larger than all of the other words. So I think what would be helpful to us here is let's remove the word people okay, from our results and let's see how that changes things just so that we can more clearly see what the next most common um, topics are. So if I just, uh, one nice tool here in this website is I can click on the word people. By the way, if you uh, are looking here, you can see in order what the most common words are. Okay, we're going to go over these in a bit more detail in a second. But if you click on any word that you want to not be displayed, and if I go like that and take it out of the results, and then click on regenerate. So now we see um, another version of our word cloud, which is a bit more useful because you know now we don't have that extremely common word people and we can see some of the other topics that are quite common or that have been quite common since 2020. So of course the first one is work okay and I think that this is coming up because as you know in part one the examiner will ask you do you work or study. So we have the word work we have the word study. Now some other very common words that we see here are of course country so things pertaining to where you are from and then I think the next most common word we see here is time. Okay, so if I just do a quick search for the word time. Okay, so the very first one is when was the last time you did something in a hurry? When was the last time you laughed? Talk about a time when you felt ha uh, ha happy. So what we see is it's very commonly used to ask the candidate to talk about a moment in time in their personal life. Okay, let's look at some... Uh, other common words that have appeared here. Uh, now the word kind, that's an interesting one. If you look at how kind is used, okay, and this is just a bit slow because there are so many results. So here we, th we see things like what kind of things do you discuss with your friends? Uh, what kind of furniture do you have in your house? So this is asking you to be a bit more specific, isn't it? Because we're taking the topic of furniture now we want to narrow it to specifically what kind of furniture do you have in your house? What kind of furniture would you like to buy in the future? Right? So these are this is a word that the examiner is using you to ask you to kind of narrow your answer to a specific area. What kind of music uh, what kind of movies do you like? What kind of furniture would you buy furniture again? What kind of job would you like to do there? Okay, let's keep looking here. So we see things like future and job and place. Uh, these are all a uh, house. So it's clear here that it's not improbable that the topic of future or something with reference to the future could appear on your exam. Something with reference to a place that you know well or a place that you visited. Something in your house. Obviously the word house has appeared in many exams over the past few years. And now I think we get into some other um, common words like the word more that we see here. And I wanted to look at that because that produces a few interesting uh, question types. So if you look at how more is used, it's often in a comparative sense. So here the question says, are people living in the countryside more friendly than those living in the cities? Uh, another use of more here. Uh, what is more important, a personal achievement or a victory of a team as a whole, right? So you're being asked to compare things. Here's another, what is more important, to do a job you like or work with people that you, that you like. So what we see is you're given two options, right? So it's quite a narrow um, question that the examiner is asking you. It's not broad. You're given two options and you've got to speak to those options. Uh, what do you think is more important, reading or writing? Okay, so just another question type that's very common that we should be aware of. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this list here, which makes it a bit easier to see which ones are most common, okay? Children, interestingly enough, is a very common word that appeared in this um, list. Let's see what other things are, you know, specific topics. Uh, of course, hometown, right, is a very common thing to be asked about. Cities, we see this time and time again. Topics about cities, topics about your city, your dream city. What city would you like to live in in the future? Uh, what is the biggest city you've ever visited? City people are friendlier than people that do not live in cities. School, of course, very, very common. And then we get into, of course, family, friends, clothes, very common, has been very common the past few years. Technology, another common one. Okay, and then the list 
goes on and on. And I will put this list on my blog so you can have a good look at the different topics. I'm also going to, uh, as you know, at the website, I've changed it so you can now browse the different lessons, the different shadowing lessons by topic. And I'm going to actually reorder these. So by the time that this video goes live, all of these will be in order of how regularly they have been revisited over the past three years, according to my experiment today. Okay, so I hope you found that quick video helpful. Please remember to leave a like and a share would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And I will see you next video. Good luck with your IELTS preparation.